Hi, this is Nick Lowry, my buddy Greg Abels, and we're still talking about a Timmy and its function in Aikido. So the, uh, the activity of a Timmy, of striking, bam, hitting on and off, has some really powerful applications that we should be aware of, even in our modern, uh, more reactive style of play. For instance, it informs us about breaking uh, uh, rhythm. It informs us about breaking the stability that occurs when we're interacting with each other and it's turned into a sine wave and we're both riding the same sine wave. We're both going down and up together and everything's equalizing. Everything's the same. He's employing on me, I'm employing on him and this is just an example using the arms but basically it, everything's equalizing. We're staying in awase. We're staying in this, in this synchrony with each other. And we utilize staying in synchrony with each other to develop our technique and to develop our position and, and method. But if he's doing it as well as I'm doing it, it's anybody's game. We're both just floating around and equalizing each other. And I tell you what, I can't do much to him and he can't, he's trying to do stuff to me. And yeah, everything's just sort of stasis. Nothing's really changed. We're making little hand changes and what have you. But it, it doesn't really, excuse me, doesn't really, uh, uh, it's hard to find the advantage. Hard to find the moment of advantage, excuse me, hard to find the moment of advantage when his play is really skillful and fluid and staying connected and my play is doing likewise. When that's happening, and he's equalizing everything and I'm equalizing everything, these little moments of a Timmy can break up the rhythm and they don't actually have to hit the guy. You just, <laughs> you just have to give him the sensation that he really has to respond. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So we're floating around and everything's equal and cool and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So the threat of the Timmy is sufficient to do the job. Now when we get into more sophisticated play, that also becomes another way of engaging with the hands. It's very uh, uh, much like in the earlier video we talked about of touching him with air, which is a pulsing function. Pulsing takes place when we have, if you think about, we have two bridges. I'm pressing into him from my back leg, he's pressing in from his back leg. He can equalize this structure. He can basically absorb this force and I can absorb his force into our body. We could be leaning on each other. Let's lean a little bit. Good. And yeah, it's, it's delivering energy to him, but he can deal with it. Structurally, it's not causing him problems. But watch what happens because when my structure fails, I let this sort of relax and I let my center come in a little deeper and then I pop him a little bit. Yeah. That popping activity is, is, is something that happens and it's very akin to, uh, to uh, bouncing a ball. Pop, 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 like basketball. The arm just relaxes and everything gets loose for a moment and then it just flexes. It doesn't slam it. I don't go, oh, I don't try to hit him. If I try to hit him, watch how that works. If I relax this and then, yeah, I go, mm -hmm. bam. Yeah, not too cool for me but I collapse it and then give him that little pulse. Yeah, you all right? Yeah. It's, it's uh, very strange because if he has a line of energy coming at him, he can feel, his body can adjust to. The proprioceptors in his nervous system can read this line very readily. It's a long, steady signal. But when the elbow fails and everything relaxes, like it just becomes loosey-goosey, and the center penetrates in, my center of gravity comes in slightly, doesn't have to go very far, and then it re-engages right at the fingertips, yeah, it has a completely different quality. And basically, it's doing the same thing as a strike. It's doing, there's a sense of nothing, then something's there, then it pops back in this relaxed face. Very similar here. I have structure on him, I'm pushing, nothing's happening, I relax the whole structure, let my center fade in slightly, then re-engage it for just a moment, just like the moment when your hand touches that ball bouncing up in the air. 
It's on and off in an instant. You can't do it hard and long and still maintain synchrony with that ball bounce. So when we're in that equalizing activity and everything he's equalizing everything I'm doing to him and I'm equalizing everything he's doing to me and nothing's happening, that little pulse hits him like a surprise. His whole nervous system has a new thing to react to. And he can do the same back to me. Like basketball. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So when you're facing this sort of stalemate of sensitivity and fluid movement, when everything, all the gears are meshing beautifully and everything's rising and falling together and nobody's experiencing any advantage, these, these twin ideas of pulsing and atemi can be very, very useful. And classically, it's called cutting through their key, cutting through their mind, cutting through their intention, cutting through their activity. And you just on and off like a switch, like a light switch. And it has a, a, a remarkable uh, ability to, to uh, yield advantage to you when you're dealing with a, uh, a serious opponent. So thank you very much.